Rachel and we are at the Scottish Festival in Payson, Utah that happens every summer in July. Uh, usually we say this sounds really exciting and fun but it's like 98 degrees so we never end up going. So this is the first time we're going mainly because our air conditioning is broken and it, there's no real difference between inside and outside anyway. So we are here to explore and and experience and uh, listen to some men in skirts. <laughs> Leading the parade is the Payson High School Bagpipe Band. Followed by our local dignitaries, City Council, Brett Christensen, Bob Proskard, Teresa Hyatt, Mayor Bill Wright, the Cowboy in the Kilt. started uh, when the, um, the band's director at the local Payson High School um, wanted to bring in a military band, or start a military band. So he started that and then he brought in bagpipes into the band and that's where it started. And from there it just, well you can see it's grown every year. So when I think of Payson, I don't think, oh, Scottish settlement. How many Scotsmen and women have, have settled in Payson? Not that many. <laughs> it really doesn't have a Scottish heritage. Uh -huh. It has a band heritage, a high school band heritage, which morphed into a pipe band. Which has just kept this. going to the, you know to the present day. Okay, so there's lots of vendors here. It looks like there's three different kinds of vendors. The first type of vendor are uh, food vendors, uh, and it looks like there's several like UK type theme type places. So uh, we'll check those out. The main question, of course, is if there's haggis, because obviously we've got to have some haggis. That's not true. I would never eat haggis, but I want to see if it's there. So we're going to try to find out. Uh, the second are just regular vendors who are selling things. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of um, a lot of like uh, Scottish clothing and the souvenir type things, uh, and also some handcrafted things. So those would be interesting, and we'll check those out. And then finally, there's something really interesting. There's these uh, clan booths. So we're going to find out what those are all about. Uh, um, I don't know if it has to do with genealogy or some sort. I don't know what it has to do with, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out. Can you tell me what the clan booths are all about? They're about the history of the fam the, the family. Really? And from all from Scotland, the Scottish areas. Okay. And where you know how they developed and their history. Are these booths like unique to here, Payson? You don't, or do you travel oh, to some of the other? Yeah. I, we do about three or four games a year. Uh huh. And a lot of people go to different places. They're all over the United States. Yeah. And what do you get out of it? Satisfaction. <laughs> well, we think it's important for our children and grandchildren to know who we are, where we came from, who our ancestors are. Uh, I think it's very important to very important to subject everyone to bagpipe music. <laughs> <laughs> so bagpipe music is just really good for the soul. If you don't like bagpipe music, then it really isn't place in it. 
in the next life, or at least not a good place in the next life, because heaven's just going to be back by music. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> there are some people who would choose hell. <laughs> and, and, and those of us that'll be in heaven will we'll be okay with that. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> really curious about is uh, how long you've been coming here and how long this festival has been going and if there's other festivals like it that you go to. Oh yeah, I, I probably do, well I used to do about 40 a year. Now some of them have went away because of COVID and some went away because I'm getting older and not going to travel quite as much. So when I retired from my brick and mortar business, it drove me nuts. I had to have something to do. So I do this. We travel probably do 30 some shows a year. Mm, all over the country? Pretty much, for here I'm going to Seattle. Mm. Then over into Montana and back down into California. I travel Oklahoma, Texas, all over. <laughs> I should have a Welsh cake. Okay, you want to wait in this line? No. Maybe come back later. Yes. So are you guys in line for Welsh cakes? Have you had them before? Do you think it will be worth this wait? I hope so. Do you think it will be better than Pirates of Caribbean? Because the wait's about as long. I'm Joe, uh, my wife Denise, we started this company 13 years ago. We make Welsh cakes, the number one maker in America, actually. So what is a Welsh cake? The Welsh cake is a griddle cake, so it's actually cooked on a griddle like a pancake, but it's made from a dough, not a batter. And so it really has no corollary in American cuisine. There's really nothing quite like it. Is it kind of like an English muffin or a trumpet? Well, no, because those are breads. And these are a cake, and, it's and more like a scone cake. So they're a crumbly dough uh, with no yeast or anything like that. And the English muffin has yeast in it. It's a sconish type dough cooked like a pancake. I, I like to say they're what you get if a scone and a pancake have a baby. Excellent. Are you here part of a clan? Thomas clan. Excellent. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Cool. I, so I was about to ask this food for haggis when this young woman came up and asked for haggis. Do you know where anybody else is? So I really want to know. What's the deal? Okay. Why are you looking for haggis? Uh, <laughs> I heard it's delicious. I have, you, have you really? No. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to 
want to check it off my bucket list. Oh, okay, it's a bucket sure. list item. Yeah. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Never had it before. Never had it. My grandfather had this weird type of meatloaf. I, I'm the only one that could eat it. And him and I would just sit down and eat and eat. I just, I, it, it was great to me. I never knew what it was. And I came to uh, the Scottish Games here. Yeah. And I had haggis, their form of haggis, which was my, sort of my grandpa's form of haggis. I went, this is my grandpa's meal. Okay, your, your sign says here that you're, you serve haggis, but tonight, no haggis today. You'll have haggis tomorrow. Tell me what you guys think of haggis. You you haven't had it, but you think what? I've had it. Doesn't it sound really good? It sounds good. Oh yeah. You know what's in it, right? <laughs> you say it sounds good. You, it's made out of what? You don't even know. So I think I think what it is is sheep's blood and uh, onions and there's like sheep parts like lungs and hearts and things like that and it's all cooked inside of a sheep's stomach all right so i have two things here i've got my scotch uh, my scott eggs which are like a hard-boiled eggs and a cooked in a um, bread in here and really, what is it doesn't look very appealing, but it's a cabbage and, uh, and um, corned beef um, from a shop that sells haggis, but they don't have to sell haggis tonight, which is what I'm eating, which is my excuse for not eating it, which of course I wouldn't have done anyway. I'll try this. Mm. That's very good. My eggs. Hard-boiled egg cooked in a breading. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, I'm gonna say that this uh, this egg here is worth the price of admission. Wow. So I had well, Rachel wasn't with me. I had the uh, Scotch eggs. Is that what they're called? Scotch egg. Scotch yep. egg. And Rachel said, "You ate that." And she told me what it was. What is it? So it's an egg that's wrapped in sausage and then breaded on the outside and then deep fried. I'm not sure. Yeah, deep fried. Yeah. It was delicious, but I don't normally eat sausage. Is why she was surprised by that. Um, uh, the um, yeah, as far as haggis goes, we've been unlucky, but here we do have canned haggis, which is uh, always an option. Or is it? <laughs> Maybe it's not. <laughs> no, it's not an option at all. I would, I would probably like this if, if it was like homemade or whatever, because I'm a liver girl. What are we doing? It's, it's, what are we doing now? Okay, so we thought we'd wait to avoid the long line for the Welsh cake, but there is always a long line for the Welsh cake. So we are getting in the long line for the Welsh cake. So it better be good. Slathering. Okay. Now the question is, does the jam go below the clotted cream or on top? On top. Okay, so honestly, it was a, about a 50 minute wait in that line. So the question is, will this live up to 50 minutes of standing? My theory is that you put clotted cream and lemon curd on anything and it's really good. That's right. That's very scone-like but not crunchy on the outside. I kind of like the crunch. I don't know how regular regular time
Okay, I came in here with some questions that have been answered. These vendor booths are great. They, uh, the clan booths are mostly about heritage and pride and genealogy. And uh, there's lots of great stories and interesting people to meet in these clan booths. Uh, the other vendors are, uh, are a variety of different craftspeople and lots of interesting things. And the food vendors do include a lot of good ethnic Scottish food, including haggis. And there are people here who are willing to try it. In fact, some, at least one, came just for the experience. So we're ending our experience where all good experiences and by the restrooms. Um, it was a lot of fun. Weather wasn't too bad. Food was good. And uh, I think we'll come again next year. Yeah, if you can't make it to Scotland, and if for some reason Payson, Utah is closer to you than Scotland is, uh, come over to Payson in July and enjoy the Payson uh, Scottish Festival. You'll have a good time. We're Dwayne and Rachel from Travel by the Book, and be sure to subscribe if you like what you see.